Hi everybody, it's time for some new particle features again. This time I'll be showing the new particle textures I've implemented. Uh, now in 2.49 it was possible to affect particle properties with textures, but the whole system was a bit unintuitive as you had to activate separate things from the material panel and so on. Uh, in my opinion, material textures should only affect material stuff, so now particles have their very own textures. So to demonstrate this, let's add a basic plane and a particle system to it. Now if we go to the texture panel, we can see that we're in tex uh, particle textures, which can be selected here. So let's first see how the particles look normally. They just emit from the plane. Now let's add a texture to the particle system and let's make it a blend texture so that it's clear what it does. Uh, by default the uh, attribute that's affected by the textures is the emission time. So let's see what it does. So it basically defines the time of the emission for the particles from black to white and the current uh, mapping for the texture is the generated texture or texture coordinates. So now we can for example set uh, that it doesn't affect them too much so now there's some randomization still present but the gradient or the blend is still working uh, and if we set it to minus one then it's used from white to black instead of from black to white. And of course we can also set uh, the texture to a vertical one or use any textures available here to get some very different results. Now some other parameters that we can use are for example the lifetime. So now all particles are emitted uh, randomly but the ones on the black area here uh, have a very short lifetime and the ones uh, in the white area have the full lifetime as defined in the settings. Uh, we can also use the density or affect the density. It's perhaps best shown if all the particles are born at once. So now we have nice um, change of the density of the particles. And once again if we set it to a negative one we see that the effect is uh, negated from the previous one. Mm. Now one thing to remember is that uh, all these textures currently work by multiplying the actual value uh, with the exception of the time it's handled a bit differently. But so now if we for example set some damping then we see that it's not really working at all. And this is because there's no damping defined in the actual particle settings. Now if we increase the damping we can see that the texture is uh, actually working correctly. Now let's remove the damping and instead choose the particle size. And let's set uh, the size to be shown. And let's set the default size to something much bigger. So now we can see that the particle size changes <coughs> depending on the texture. Now one other thing that's nice about this new implementation is that uh, I recently implemented the particle textures or the texture coordinates for particles which map the x-axis to the particle lifetime. So let's change back to a horizontal blend texture so that the changes are on the x-axis and let's remove gravity so that the effects can be more easily seen so now we can see that the particles are born very small, but they grow uh, bigger uh, once they they near their death. And what's nice about this 
is that we can of course use all kinds of things as textures. For example, uh, we could choose a wood texture and now remember only the center of the texture is actually used so it's a nice alternating gradient. So now the particles are bouncing back and forth uh, with big and small sizes. And we can of course combine multiple textures so let's add for example another one and let's make it a blend texture again and it's now mapped to the emission time so now we get these kind of cool effects that weren't really possible before now the options also work for hair so let's change to hair and set the length a bit lower um, so now we can for example change the uh, hair length according to the uh, oh yeah now we have again the particle coordinates let's set them back to the generated texture preview isn't changing. Oh well, I'll have to fix that. So, now we have... Uh, let's make the data blend. So now we can see that the particle lengths are changed. And one nice thing about uh, 2.5 has always been the interactiveness. So now we can, for example, change the scale and it updates automatically and interactively on the UI. Or we can change the location. Uh, we could actually set this back to um, the wood texture. And let's set the scale a bit down. Both X and Y axis. And we can even animate these values. So let's for example set the offset to somewhere here and somewhere here so now we can see that the length is animated smoothly now the length works for uh, any hair but to use these other things you have to uh, uh, activate child particles uh, so for example we could add some clumping to the child particles oh, yeah let's reduce the amount of parent particles and let's for example not use the length so now all the child particles are clumped but if we activate the texture we see that some of the particles which are in the black areas of the texture don't get clumped and the animation of course works there also. So I think that's it. I hope you have a nice time playing with these new features. So bye bye.